Thanks for joining me for another video. I wanted to show you guys an old sketchbook from my art school days. I started this around 2008 and it spans a couple of relationships and simply experiencing life as a young person. So listen up all you young whippersnappers for some life lessons. <laughs> so you'll see my manga style melting with symbolism and finding meaning. Younger me was very poetic. And it's so interesting to go back and look at my roots. I hope you guys enjoy this flip through. Okay, so I was really getting into studying theologies and symbolism and so I was doing some research on Buddhism and some doodling and I named her Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> This one, it, uh, I think it was going to be a painting. There was a poem here and it didn't really turn into anything though. And I, <laughs> I have a lot of different song lyrics in here that really inspired me at the time. And, um, and yeah, this was an old relationship and I should probably warn that there's a slight bit of nudity, just some cartoon boobs, just for forewarning if you're offended by that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> this one uh, actually kind of turned into a painting, and I think I drew another drawing here in a bit. Very, very kind of morbid, but yeah. This, I was working on a tattoo design and I was looking up a bunch of symbolism that consisted of all sorts of symbols um, dominantly the tree of life the Kabbalah tree of life and I think this was as far as I got with it and I don't think it ended up ended up becoming a tattoo but it was kind of fun this is more Kabbalah research and a little drawing of Shiva and Shakti. <laughs> more research and doodling and I really liked that manga Tarot Cafe. The artwork in it's so pretty. I actually got the Tarot Cafe manga from my local library and reread it after so many years and I still love it and I, I probably will end up buying it at some point because the artwork is really cool. <laughs> More research. Yeah, in the early days of my art journey, I, I didn't have a lot of control over my artistic space. So I lived with my parents and I worked on my art degree in kind of just where I could. Um, and I didn't live close to school, so it was kind of a commute. I didn't have a car and I had to take the bus and train to school and around this time finding work was tough because of the 2008 recession so what little money I was able to make went to school and despite all that I recognize I still had some privilege I've always had some form of a support in my life and I'm so grateful for that yeah it took a lot of time for me to be able to have a space I could make my own and I just wanted to say a quick word about one of my recent videos so I gave a studio tour of my art space and the feedback was mostly positive, but it made me think I wish I added a couple of thoughts. I've been collecting art supplies for probably 20 years now and I tend to take care of what I do have because I value what I own so much. I've definitely built up a collection because I've been doing art my whole life. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. And in regards to the space I have now, I'm so fortunate to split rent with my partner. I work two other jobs alongside my art and struggle of finding the balance between my passion. I guarantee that being an artist isn't always as glamorous as those aesthetic videos out there. <laughs> and, oh yes, yeah, so this was a painting. And I don't even know if I have a copy of it. I think I still have it somewhere. If, if I can find it, I'll... I'll put it in here, but I'm not sure if I photographed it or not. 
Um, I think this was for a school project, but I can't remember. And I think it was combining maybe my inspirations together. I feel like there was something written that well. Ah, yes. These are some old characters of a manga I always wanted to make. And it was kind of like a rock band inspired by hair metal. <laughs> I was kind of going through a Motley Cruise phase, which is, is really funny to see now. This was also another character. Oh man. Some dude that I, I didn't finish and I guess I wasn't drawing his hands and arms right, so I gave up. <laughs> Ah, oh, 2010. Wow. I think these are tool lyrics. If that doesn't date me by now. <laughs> oh, this one. This was a school project for sure. It was inspired by uh, Tarot. And I wrote a poem and I wanted to do a painting that goes along with the poem. And I know I've got a a photo of this one, so I'll, I'll put it up here. Wow. There you go. <laughs> and some angsty emo looking dude. <laughs> so some lyrics by A Perfect Circle. These are also other characters. I feel like I was just in the mood to draw all the characters I pretty much came up with before I went to to college for art and they stayed with me for a long time and some of them have also made their return if you happen to follow me on Instagram you'll you'll see some of my old characters reborn um <laughs> random stuff don't ask yeah uh, set more school notes. This was for another painting I did for a class, and um, yeah, it's about duality. Very symbol heavy, my old work for sure. All right. So we're getting more into a change of era where I was in a different relationship with someone and I was getting into nonprofits and especially clubs like Stand that were based on the Darfur genocide awareness. And this, I think these are notes from a book I was reading. And some class notes. And this particular person I was with wanted me to do a drawing of a, a futuristic cityscape. And I eventually did do one that was actually symbolic of, of our relationship after it ended. And yeah, it was, it was really meaningful and I think it, it still is for sure. And what did I name that one? I think it was, we will see eye to eye someday when all of our petty differences and human emotions no longer matter and, and things like that. This was research for another painting I did in school. It was the story of Icarus and Daedalus. Um, and I, I don't know if I have a photo of this one. It was a big oil painting and I know for sure I later painted over it. <laughs> it was okay. It, it definitely was a, a learning painting for me. So it wasn't anything really worth keeping. I think I was working on that futuristic city with that one. Did 
this drawing for a friend. I was inspired by Sedona and Flagstaff in Arizona, and they have such pretty, pretty forests. I love that place. I definitely feel like that's one of my favorite places to go back and visit. Let's see, I was doing a logo design for a nonprofit that was a Utah Refugee Women's Initiative. And so I was coming up with different thumbnails of what their logo. This is just a doodle. <laughs> and yeah, ended up being something like this with aspen trees and kind of like a tree of life circle type thing with the roots and the branches. It was okay. It was very early illustrator work for me. This was Luna. I sure miss you, buddy. He was the fattest cat. <laughs> I sure do miss him. Oh yes, I remember I was camping and had this idea that turned into this bigger piece. So I quickly drew down my idea. <laughs> this one, I was with a group of friends and we were all collaborating on a drawing and this was a particular friend that we were referencing. <laughs> um, and all my friends were collabing together to draw different cats. I think my cat is this one in the tree. <laughs> That's what he... A lady. This is 2013. I think probably at this point I was slowing down with my art for sure. I wasn't consistent and uh, after I graduated college, I think I... I really slowed down on doing art and it wasn't maybe until four or five years ago that I really started picking it back up again. So I think this was another commission to do a book cover that I don't know happened. <laughs> I really liked this drawing. The Ouroboros and called it accomplishment and eternity of wisdom. Still keeping the, the symbolism. <laughs> um, more research, Kabbalism. I think this is probably when I finished the futuristic city painting. I can't really remember. And, yeah. Ah, so this was a contest by the band The Antlers to do album artwork, which I did a bunch of thumbnails for, and I don't think I ever en ended up doing a final drawing for them. I feel like I'm much more committed to ideas these days than I was back then, for sure. As you can tell, there's a lot of abandoned ideas, but I think that's also natural too. So this was a, a doodle by some friends. I think we were just at a bar. <laughs> and this was the Antlers album, doodles, some more of that. And that one. And then after this, I think I pretty much gave up. This was also another album cover doodling that I, I ended up drawing for. It was an X that I know I have their album somewhere, but I don't know if I have a, a photo of it and whatever. So, fast forwarding to probably 2015 by now. So this is spanning maybe, what is it, seven years? 
I think I probably had other sketchbooks too, but you could see how how I slowed down with with doing art for sure. Um, by this time, I was with Morgan, which I'm still with now. So, yeah, spanning a lot of my past relationships. It's pretty fascinating to see, and he wanted me to design something for him. Ooh, chemistry notes. <laughs> me and Morgan did this collab in one of my favorite places in the whole world. It's a campground nearby, and it was really early on in our relationship, too. Um, and that's my kitty moon shadow, and I said, Hello, old sketchbook, Kenna 2020. So that was a couple years ago. I probably pulled this out and looked through it and then drew that. <laughs> and I think that's all. Yeah, so looking back at the younger me, I wanted so much in life, and I definitely worked my way towards so many awesome things. It takes time, and it's humbling. I would hope that if you're in a place that feels lacking, don't give up. Things change. And I know it's cliche. <laughs> Even now, I have dreams so far away, but I want to continue down that path. I've already come such a long way, and thanks so much for watching. I truly appreciate the support, and I'll catch you later.